Are you or your parents starting to have memory problems, but nobody's talking about it? The system is still where it was with regard to uh, the, uh, with regard to the, the uh, progressivity, as I've said. Do you fear losing control as you age and not being able to make your own decisions? Do you envision you or your parents ending up in a dismal nursing home, surrounded by impaired older people, eating pureed carrots and wishing for the end? Today, we'll walk through the story of a man who did everything right to maintain control, make his own choices, and not end up in a nursing home. What happens may surprise you, and by the end, you'll know the one thing you need to do to maintain control in your life. I'm in my office, staring at pictures of my sweet daddy, with tears running down my face. But suddenly I have the answer. I've just solved my father's problem. There's only one issue. He's been dead for six months. I'm suddenly transported back to my childhood, to the Minnesota farm where I was raised as the youngest of eight kids. And there's my sweet daddy. He's 6'5 and comes walking through the kitchen and gives me this little smile before he races out the door to get back to farming. He is gonna be out well past dark trying to finish the combining before it starts to rain. While mom takes hands-on care to meet all of our needs, it's dad that sets the stage for our values. Independence, hard work, and taking control always gets you what you want. You might be a lot like my sweet daddy. You wanna maintain control in your life. You wanna keep driving, keep managing your finances, just keep making important decisions. When asked if you'd rather stay living at home or move to some facility someday, I've never met a person who said, yeah, sign me up for the move. Everybody says the same thing, I never want to leave. But what happens as we age? Physical problems. Well, lots of those attacked my sweet daddy and he overcame all of them. I remember one time he dropped a plow on his hand and he came into the house and his pinky finger was literally dangling by some skin. And they sewed it back on and was basically good as new. You know, he slipped on steps leading up to grain bins. He was attacked by random machinery. He would come in and his body was just regularly bruised and battered, broken ribs, and his hands were always filled with cuts and scrapes in your fingernails when they're all black and growing back, but none of it slowed him down. So those things seemed small when he was diagnosed with Parkinson's disease. Walking got harder, using his body overall wasn't easy, and even his thinking got a little less sharp. He didn't want extra help and he fended off efforts to help him or assist him or give care in most ways from most people, unless it was my mom, bless her heart. Flash forward to me driving down the interstate in Portland, Oregon in the pouring rain, the kind of rain that either makes you really want to stay home or move to Arizona. It's spring and like all the other wildlife around, I was heavily pregnant with our second child. So while I'm stuck in my head, thinking about that, driving home, my phone rings and it's my sister. My sister never calls unless there's a problem. Instead of some other family drama, she tells me that my sweet daddy had died. Not at home with all of us at his side, loving every last breath that he took, but alone in a nursing home. The next days were a whirlwind of giving birth, complications with the pregnancy, and missing my father's funeral because I couldn't fly home. Over the next six months, I kept feeling bad. Not just because my father had died, but because he had lived and died wrong in a way that he never wanted. This challenged the very core of my being and the way I had built my life on those values. Independence, hard work, and taking control of your life always gets you what you want but it hadn't for the biggest role model of my life. So I'm back in my office looking at pictures of my sweet daddy and processing what had happened. How could my strong independent father end up losing control and being in a nursing home? Why does this happen for people? Why will it happen for you and your loved ones? And then it hit me. 
Independence and fierce control don't stop life. They don't stop your body from aging or diseases from happening. They don't make your body able to continue on despite everything. And they don't put a system in place to help you compensate while your body withers away. Paul Baltus was a German researcher who came up with the idea of selective optimization with compensation. Putting it simply, people do best when they select their most important goals or things that they want and they compensate for problems. Well, my daddy selected independence and staying home, but he forgot the compensation part. The magic of my revelation is that you can do something different for yourself or a loved one to maintain control. Instead of thinking that the system that you put in place during your adult life will last until you die, you must realize that it can't. Unless you get hit by a bus and die instantly, your needs are going to increase to the extent where your current system will fail. Here I introduce the term intentional dependence, where you learn how to choose how you are dependent so that you remain in control. This might sound overly simple and impossible all at the same time. Being dependent on others means you're not in control, right? But here's where we use a famous psychiatrist, Viktor Frankl, to figure out how the process works. Victor survived the Holocaust, an extreme example of losing control. And instead of giving up, like most people did, he survived with a basic belief. His famous quote is this, between stimulus and response, there is a space. In that space is our power to choose our response. In our response lies our growth and our freedom. So the stimulus that we're talking about is the inevitable change in our body and our mind as we either age normally or suffer some disease process. The response that most people make is feeling out of control and throwing ourselves to the wind of whatever's going to happen. Instead, I'm here to teach you how to use that space in between the mind and body changes, in the mild stages of physical problems, and maybe even mild dementia, to put a system in place that will allow you to plan for your future and remain in control. If my father had been willing to go through that process, he could have put a plan in place that could have kept him out of the nursing home and in a place where he actually wanted to be, more in control. I used to think that independence always got you what you wanted, but after seeing my father's experience, I realized that you must embrace help. It all starts with a conversation with your loved ones, where you dare to envision a future where you do need help, but you are the captain of the ship. With this new information in mind, you'll likely want to jump to my next video where I tell you how to have that conversation with your loved ones. I can't wait to see you there.